from Community Synagogue of Rye. You can see I am stepping through our dust barrier as construction continues on the far side of this building. And on this side, our custodial staff and educators are working really hard to get ready for our new school year in the Center for Jewish Learning and our Early Childhood Center. You can see Alonzo right here. Hi. Our amazing head custodian and facilities manager. You can see that there's a lot of work to be done as we prepare to plant Jewish seeds in our youngest minds and hearts. And that is precisely what this week's Torah portion actually teaches us to do. This week's Torah portion, Ve'er Hanan, continues with Moses' farewell speech to the Israelites as he prepares to say goodbye and they continue on into the land of Israel without him. This week, as he continues to recount the commandments that the previous generation received in the wilderness, he repeats in particular the Ten Commandments and also speaks the very famous words of the Shema and the Ahavta. The Shema are people's watchword for all time, that central prayer, which is supposed to be the first thing we say when we wake up in the morning, when we go to bed at night, the last words that are on our lips before we die, all come from Moses' speech this very week. We're told to listen but there is one, only one, unique, interconnected God in the world. And then we're told to love, that we should love with all of our heart and our soul and our might, that God. And perhaps part of what we're being taught is that we should be loving God's creations by extension. So loving God, in a sense, is loving our fellow humans, loving the animals, loving the earth. We're told also in this week's Torah portion, as Moses gives this speech and speaks these words of the Ahavta, that we should remind ourselves constantly of the mitzvot, the commandments that we've been given, that we should think of them when we're lying down, when we're getting up, when we're at home and we're on our way, and in particular, that we should inscribe them on the doorposts of our homes and our gates. It's from this week's Torah portion and these words that we get the idea of a mezuzah. You can see we have mezuzot on all of the doorways in our congregation. Perhaps you have some in your home. I hope so. If not, let us know. We'll help you put one up. And inside, of course, whatever decorative mezuzah keys you have are the very words about which I just spoke, the ones that enclose upon them the Shema and the Ahavta. These words which remind us as we enter any space that it should be a place of love and that it can be, in fact, a holy space, no matter how mundane or room it is the rest of the time. So I want to invite you this Shabbat as we move towards the end of our week again to find a Shema moment, to find a moment of quiet and of listening, and then to think about that word the Ahavta, to love, to consider perhaps an act of love that you can offer to someone in your life, in your midst, and through it to fulfill that command as well, to love God.